let's have a play with status check. So if we go into my first instance and look at the status check tab, as you can see, we can see the two status checks that are being run. So there's a system status check and an instance status check, okay? And in case you are not happy with these checks and you believe that there's an error, you can click on report instance status to help it with detect issues. So what we can do though is because everything is running, we can still go ahead and create our CloudWatch alarm that will have a reboot or recover action on our instance. So I'll do action and then I will click on create status check alarm. So we create a new alarm and then we have an alarm notification. So we can send it to the default CloudWatch alarms topic uh, if you want to have a notification, but you could disable this as well if you wanted to. And an alarm action. So what do we want to do when the alarm is triggered? And we have two options that we can be that could be very helpful for, for us. So recover or reboot. So recover is going to be very helpful when we want to recover from a physical host issue from AWS or reboot when it's a software issue. So I will choose recover. And then we need to look at the alarm threshold. So we want to have uh, the status check failed, for example, uh, either. So if it's either both or instance or system, so based on what you want. And then for one consecutive period of five minutes. Here's the alarm name, and here's the sample metric data. So as we can see, uh, we are at zero because the alarm uh, state hasn't been triggered. But if there was an issue with the status check, then this will go to one. And so for one consecutive period of five minutes, then this will trigger the alarm. So I will click on uh, Create. And something is wrong because uh, it can only be done on the status check failed system, of course. So let's go on to status check, uh, check failed system. Here we go. And now we have the recover action. Click on create. And now this CloudWatch alarm has been created. So what I'm going to do is, again, go into uh, my CloudWatch alarm. So let's click on CloudWatch here, alarms. And yes, I'm going to go directly into CloudWatch Alarms from here. And we can see that we have one alarm right here, which has insufficient data. So very soon, uh, it's going to be OK. So let me wait until it is OK and green. My alarm is now in the OK state. And so I can click on it. And as you can see, uh, the actual instance uh, metric value is 0. But we need a threshold of 0 0.99, so 1, to go into the alarm state. So what we can do, though, is that we can simulate a failure of this alarm to go into the alarm state and see what happens. So if I scroll down, as we can see, we have the history of uh, the uh, actions of the alarm. So as you can see, we created it, and then it went from insufficient data to OK. So let's issue an API call to make this alarm go into the alarm states. So I'm going to click on Cloud Shell to open a CLI directly from within the cloud that is going to be properly configured, and that will save me some time. But you can use the CLI on your own terminal if you have configured it in the past, OK? So what I'm going to do is to launch a CloudWatch uh, alarm and set alarm states. And I'm going to look at the version 2. Here we go. So this is how you run the alarms. Uh, so we need to give the alarm name and the state value and the state reason. And the state value is alarm. So let's go into CloudWatch Shell. So first, let's get the alarm name. So the alarm name is right here. So I'm going to copy this. So I will type AWS CloudWatch, set alarm state. And then the alarm name is the one I just copied right here. And the alarm state is going to be alarm. And so sorry, state value is alarm and state reason. So let's just change this. So state value is alarm and state reason is, and I will just say uh, testing, recovering, action. Press enter. And this is going to set my alarm into the alarm state. So let's refresh this. And as you can see now, the alarm is in alarm. And so if we scroll down and look at the actions, um, there's going to be a, a notification and the alarm went into the alarm state. And so if we look at the history right here, so here is what I want to show you, sorry. So the alarm went from OK to in alarm. And then two actions happened. There was a SNS message sent to an SNS topic right here. 
And also the second action that was executed was successfully executed action, EC2 recover. So my EC2 instance right here has been recovered thanks to this action. It's not something that we can really, really see uh, how it was being recovered, okay? But uh, as we can see, uh, we have the alarm status one and one in alarm, and then the EC2 instance has been recovered. So it will take a bit of time to be recovered entirely, but at least it shows you that when this alarm was being triggered, then the recovery action was being launched, okay? So that's it for this lecture. Uh, you could also launch another, create another alarm as, a, as an exercise, and this one on the instance, and then reboot the uh, EC2 instance as an action, and you can try it out and also set the alarm state. But for now, we're good to go. What I'm going to do is just delete uh, this alarm right here. I can close Cloud Shell, I don't need it anymore for now, and then I'm good to go. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next lecture.